Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers at Tigers Stadium. On the mound for the White Sox is Reggie Patterson, whose record is 2-2 two two, with a 4.76 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Jerry Uger, whose record is 5-4 with a 4.80 ERA. Okay, so we took two out of three uh, at Yankee Stadium against the Yankees, and uh, I'm actually kind of surprised we're uh, widening the gap. If you take a look at the standings here today, um, we've uh, put the Yankees six games back. Baltimore's at three and a half, so they're in striking distance. And we're finally uh, going to the American League West to face our first team in that division, the Chicago White Sox. I'm going to click on them real quick here so that uh, you all can see the um, information here for uh, the injuries, the prospects, expiring contracts, and all the other good uh, details. They've actually given up more runs than they've scored in their one game over 500. So take a look there. Um, they do have two pitchers on the IL, uh, Francisco Berrios and Ken Kravik. So that's why Reggie Patterson is in the lineup. We're going to be facing him today. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get things started. First of all, I, I want to take a moment just to, just to say uh, thank you to all the veterans out there. You may have noticed on the uh, title card, that is uh, the great Hank Greenberg, uh, who enlisted in the Army in 1941, left the Detroit Tigers to uh, go and serve the uh, great country of the United States of America. So, uh, very cool. I thought I'd, I'd put that out there. Uh, also, not as important, but maybe in our little world it is. Uh, we do have the uh, first of the two uh, races for the Final Four. That's going to take place today in the seventh inning stretch. So be sure to stick around for that. We have some big prizes um, uh, out there to, to be won. Uh, Jerry Uger on the mound. He has been terrible lately. Uh, the... Yankees only have four plate appearances against him. So maybe that's an advantage for Uger today. All of the bullpen is available. And uh, here is Reggie Patterson. He is a righty. And uh, Henderson is listed as tired, so we got to give him another break just as he was getting going. Uh, Trammell is back from his day off in the cleanup role. Reggie's still in there. Our Reggie is still in there. And yes, Dawson is in the lineup once again. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the Chicago White Sox lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing center field is Odeby McDowell. Batting second at first base is Mike Squires. Batting third at third base is Buddy Bell. Batting cleanup in left field is Ron Kittle. Batting fifth and catching is Biff. Pocaroba. Batting sixth, playing shortstop, is Fran Mullins. Batting seventh in right field is Rusty Coots. Batting eighth in DHing is Henry Cruz. And finally, batting ninth, playing second base, is Neil Fiala. Okay, Jerry Uger. He was doing so well. He, his ERA was uh, under four. And take a look here at his log. The last two starts, he just got blowed up. He gave up six runs uh, on the ninth to Baltimore and five more uh, just last week against Boston. So uh, he did win three decisions in a row before he hit this little bump in the road. We need a big uh, comeback from him today. Um, we do. I mean, we're on the right path as a team, but we do have questions in our starting lineup and. Um, with Bruce Robbins struggling, uh, we can't afford to have Jerry. It seems like every time through the lineup, we have two pitchers that just can't get it done. There is the Tigers' defensive alignment for today. And here is Odeby McDowell leading off the ball game, batting 242 with seven home runs. And Uger walks him on a pitch that's just out of the strike zone low. McDowell's got 97 speed rating. Uh, he's got 19 
stolen bases this year. Okay, so Mike Squires is up. Only first baseman in baseball has no power at all. Slow roller to short and a double play. That'll wipe uh, McDowell off the base pass. And we have two down now for Buddy Bell. Buddy Bell batting 246 with nine home runs. And he's going to fly out to left field. That's Gibby out there today. And that'll do it for the top of the first. Let's go to the bottom half of the inning. Here is the Tigers lineup rundown for today. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second at third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting third at first base is Greg Brock. Batting cleanup, playing shortstop, is Alan Trammell. Batting fifth and DHing today is Reggie Jackson. Batting sixth and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting seventh in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting eighth in center field is Andre Dawson. And batting ninth in right field is Kevin Bass. Reggie Patterson, he is a rookie this year for the White Sox, as I mentioned. Really just getting an opportunity because of uh, injuries. Two and two with that 476 ERA. Opponents are betting 301 against him. Uh, he has a pretty lively fastball, 94 miles an hour. Uh, ground balls half the time. The fastball is rated a 90, that's excellent. Curveball pretty solid at 84. He's got a change up that he must mix in to keep people off balance. 64, pretty low, it rated uh, overall at 84. This is a pitcher who um, the White Sox could use long term, that's for sure. Although he's on, he, uh, they might trade him if you look at the uh, information right there. Okay, so there's Reggie Patterson and we have uh, Sweet Lou. We should take a look at the uh, defensive alignment for the White Sox. Ron Kittle out and left, pretty bad defensively. Otherwise, a decent looking uh, defensive rate ratings for all the other players here is Lou leading off striking out what is the deal with Lou and he did have a hit in the last game but he is just kind of falling apart since he went on that tear I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going mean to be wasting time here but since the home run barrage he's had one two three four five six seven hits um, so not not great so one down as Lou strikes out. Here's Mickey Hatcher. Hatcher, base hit the center field. Good job by Hatcher. In the number two spot today. And uh, here's Greg Brock. Brock Ness Monster has taken over for Whitaker. Had some big hits lately as he bloops it into center field. Caught by McDowell. Two down. Going to leave it up to Trammell, and Trammell pops it up on the infield right next to second base on the shortstop side. And that's the third out. So we go to the top of the second. No score with Ron Kittle leading off. Now, if you remember, Ron Kittle was listed as a catcher. Um, and uh, before this season started, I switched him to his regular position. Uh, I don't really like doing that, but like Ron Kittle... I don't know if he ever caught a game in the majors. As uh, he strikes out here, there's the first K for Uger. And then Biff Pocaroba popping it up. He splits time with um, Jim Sundberg. They're kind of uh, a platoon as Pocaroba pops out. It's just a fun name to say. You should say it out loud if, you, if you're just sitting at home. Maybe like make sure no one else is in the room because it might be weird. Uh, okay, uh, so Fran Mullins walks. A 191 hitter. Come on, Uger. Two down, runner on first. And Uger walks his third batter, Rusty Coots. Coots does have a good eye. Betting 306 with 11 home runs. Career year for Coots. It's going to bring up Henry Cruz, and he walks another batter. This happened uh, with uh, Robbins in yesterday's game. He walked the bases loaded. He walked a run in, in fact. So four walks now, and the number nine hitter. Oh, one count. Ground ball to third. Step up the bag. 
There we go. So, all that bluster and nothing. Go to the bottom of the second. We've got Reggie leading off at a curveball, striking out Red J. Jackson, not the Reggie Patterson. Reggie on Reggie, crime. And then Parrish grounds out. And there we go, base hit for Gibby. Every time I move Gibby, Gibby up in the lineup, he doesn't do anything. Gibby was caught stealing twice yesterday, and he was successful once, so he's one for three in stolen bases. Uh, what is his 72% against Pokoroba, who is an 82? So, just slightly above average. And there's two outs, and it's, it's, it's Dawson. What's Dawson going to do? Nothing, so we're going to have him steal anyway. Here we go. Come on, Gibby. Give it to us. Oh, no. Oh, man. He's one out of his last four. All right. Well, the way Uger's pitching, we need to take chances. We're back to the top of the lineup here at the top of the third with ODB McDowell grounding out to third. One down. Once again, Mike Squires. There's a base hit for Squires up the middle. Second hit for the Sox to go with those four walks. Uger leaves it up for uh, Buddy Bell, but he pulls it into foul ground. Two down. Ron Kittle up next. There's a base hit through the left side of the infield. Um... They didn't give him a hit on that? I don't know. Something's weird, right? Maybe I was looking at the wrong statistic. I could have sworn the Sox have three hits now. No? Nope. Oh, it was a walk for McDowell the first time through. Okay, my bad. Okay. So we go to the bottom of the third. No score. And here's Andre Dawson. The slump of a lifetime right now. He did have a hit yesterday to break the offer. I think he was over 24 uh, before he got that hit. Here he pops out, one down. Kevin Bass comes through with a base hit all the way to the wall, and he has himself another double. Fourth double on the season. He's been a nice surprise. Playing really great defense in uh, right and uh, getting on base. That's all you can ask. As Whitaker grounds out to third. Bass holds. And that's the lead up to Mickey Hatcher. And he hits a slow roller to first. And that'll do it. I think uh, it was John M. who uh, was keeping tally that the uh, Yankees had nine errors in that three-game series that we just played against them. So we were getting a lot of our runs manufactured for us. Mullins here in the top of the fourth, flies out to right center field. So yeah, we, we're not exactly tearing the cover off the ball right now. Rusty Kuntz, ground ball to first. And here is Henry Cruz. You see, this is a minor league uh, baseball card here. He did play in the majors, um, all the way to 1981, and then uh, I think he just became a minor leaguer and eventually left and went to play for the uh, Mexican League. Okay, we're going to the bottom of the fourth. Greg Brock leading off. Brock, Trammell, and Reggie. Got some good wood on it. Lining out to right. One down. Here's Trammell. Trammell had... Uh, Kind of a career year last year. He had 20 home runs in 1980, 18 in the strike shortened season, and only six this year. I don't know where his power went, but he hasn't hit a home run in quite a long time. As he hits a ground ball to first, and he's listed as tired at least once a week. And Reggie strikes out again. Unbelievable. Okay, we go to the top of the fifth now. Uger's uh, almost at 70 pitches. I think he can go at least, well, 
he walks his fifth batter. He might not even make it that long. He walks the number nine hitter, Fiala, who's batting 337. He's among the league leaders. And now we got uh, two lefties here. Okay, we're going to pitch to him. This is where things kind of come apart on uh, a wild pitch. Runner on second. Huger jams McDowell. McDowell popping it up to shortstop. All right, so there's one down. We're going to pull the outfield in. Keep the ball in front of us because we know Mike Squires doesn't have any power. Maybe prevent Fiala from scoring on a base hit. And he walks his six batter, so that'll do it. We've seen enough. Huger, man, his, I don't know what to do with him. I really don't. Um, we're going to bring in uh, Tom Hume, actually. Hume could go a couple innings in relief. And uh, he throws a lot of ground balls. We need a double play here with Buddy Bell up. So we're going to keep everybody uh, normal depth. Try to turn two. Oh, come on! I mean, there's there's nothing we can do. Like, it's just <laughs> it's a wild pitch, a pass ball. Uh, and two walks. I mean, there, there's nothing, there's no way we can stop it. We are on the verge of being mobiled. Ground ball to short. I pulled the infield in. That will prevent the run. But now Hume has got to get the mighty Kittle. And uh, this, this is probably the game on the line right here. Base hit the middle. Yeah, there was nothing we were going to be able to do to get through that as that run is uh, tacked on to the, um, the line for Uger. There's Biff Pokoroba. Another walk. That's the seventh walk by Tigers pitchers and the bases are still loaded. We've got the light hitting Fran Mullins batting 168 versus right-handers. Brown ball to third. Yeah. So, I mean... There was nothing we were going to be able to do about that. The game had already decided. One way or another, the White Sox were going to take the lead. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Here is Lance Parrish. Grounding out to first. One down. Next up is Gibby. There's another hit for Gibby. He's two for two on the day with a base hit to uh, uh, left field. Okay, now we're going to hit and run with Dawson. Hoping he can make contact. Hey! A base hit in the center field. Maybe he's coming out of his slump. First and third now with one out. Bass had to hit his first time up. He's got some speed. We're going to hit and run here again. Oh, no! Oh, he didn't strike out. He just swung and missed. Dawson steals second. That is Dawson's uh, fifth stolen base on the season. Okay, we're going to go on contact. So we need Bass to at least get a ground ball here. Okay, we'll take a fly ball to right. That should score Gibby. It does. Sack fly, and Dawson tags up and takes third. So the game is tied. Here's Sweet Lou. And blue walks. All right. Uh, first and third. Two down. That's the first walk for Patterson. And I like Mickey in this situation. Sticky Mickey! Nope. Little rainbow into right center field. That'll do it. So the Tigers even it up. We can't get a little rally going there, unfortunately. We go to the top of the sixth. Rusty Coons. We're going to keep uh, Hume in there, at least for this batter. Ground ball to third. And that'll do it. So we're going to take out Hume. He did walk a batter, and that was unfortunate. And we're going to bring in Cappy. Cappy is our left-hander that uh, mows everybody down. I mean, lefty is batting 164. I know that he's due to give up some runs. He's not as good as his numbers, but we got to go with the odds as Henry Cruz steps in 
Cruz is 0 for 5 with a walk in his career. And he strikes him out. Good job by Cappy. There's one down. Fiala, 120 hitter versus left-handers. And he loops it over the head of Hatcher for a base hit. All right, runner on first. Next up is Odeby. You see him here on the 1984 United States baseball team. That's the same team Mark McGuire was on. There's a slow roller to short. Trammell turns. Oh, there was already two out. So, just a easy out to first. We go to the bottom of the six. We got the uh, robot race coming up. Next inning, don't forget. Here's Greg Brock. Striking out. Reggie Patterson is uh, looking like Cy Young out there right now. That's a hit for Trammell in the center field. Six hits for Detroit. White Sox only have four, but remember, we've walked him seven times. Um, God, Reggie is so horrible. Oh, I like him a little bit better now. Two-run shot to dead center field, 483 feet. That's an upper decker. And uh, it's 3-1, to one, Detroit. Nice job, Reggie. That's his 10th home run. If you're a Tiger, you have 10 home runs, it looks like. We do still lead the American League in homers. As Parrish grounds out. Parrish, the, the, the one Tiger who should have the most home runs. And doesn't. Gibby two for two on the day. Almost drops a little duck snort in there for his third hit. It will be caught by McDowell. And we're going to the seventh inning. Okay, we have uh, Cappy to face Squires. Uh, I'm taking Cappy out. I know it's lefty-lefty, but uh, Squires hits lefties pretty well. He doesn't hit righties particularly well. So we are going to bring in... Um, Dave Patterson? Wait, how does he do versus lefties? Oh, crap. Let's take a look at the splits. Um, I mean, not good at all. But we're going to go for it. Okay, so Mike Squires leading off here at the top of the seventh. Slow roller to first, and that's an infield single, and panic is setting in. Here's Buddy Bell flipping it to right center field. That should be an easy play for Bass. There we go, one down. Next up is Ron Kittle. You don't want to mess around with Kittle. Shoots it to center, and it falls in in front of Dawson. First and third now. Um, I I will keep the uh, infield back for a double play possibility. We have catcher uh, Pokoroba batting and Kittle on first. That run doesn't really matter. If um, yeah, it doesn't now matters. That is the eighth walk for Tigers pitchers today. The bases are loaded. Tying runs on second. And uh, once again, we're going to keep the infield back. I'll give up that run for a double play. I can't imagine Kittle will score. Let's pull the, um, we're going to pull the outfield in. Let's just be smart about it. Striking him out. Okay. Good job. Now the 290 hitter, Rusty Koontz, comes to the plate. Bases are loaded. We're going to play every plate straight away. Uh, infield single back to the pitcher. I mean, I would rather just hit a freaking grand slam. Like, I would rather have that. Okay, so we're going to bring in Rucker. This is a high leverage situation, and Rucker has our most saves, but we need him to come through here against the lefties. Bucker versus Cruz. Ground ball to third. Hatcher gets the Tigers out of the jam. And it's robot race time. Look at this. Here we are, robot race. We're down to the final four. Today's race is going to be John M. 
versus Douglas B. Tomorrow will be Tony A. versus Jeremiah M. Then we'll have a day off against uh, the White Sox from the robot race. And then in the final game, which I think will be this Sunday of the series, we will have the grand finale where the winner will win a Raleigh Fingers um, autograph photo with certificate of authenticity. And uh, second prize is a 1973 Raleigh Fingers Tops baseball card, near mint condition. And then third prize is a bag of Raleigh Fingers mustache hair. Okay, uh, so here we go. We got 45 seconds on the clock. We have Douglas B at the top. We have John M at the bottom. And we're going to count down from three, and we're going to get this race going. Here we go. Good luck to our contestants. This is a big one. Final four. Three, two, one. Bam. Okay. This is, a, this is a big race here. There's a lot on the line. Both robots seem to be exerting all their energy early to stay head to head. Will one of these robots take off? Maybe get a get a little bit of a lead? Douglas is maybe ahead by a, a clamp. Uh, John M, his eyebrows are holding him back. Oh, wow, he's off the grid. Okay, here he comes. Uh, Douglas B slowing down. 10 seconds. One of these robots is going to make a break for it. John M has a little bit of a lead. Here comes Douglas B. I think it's the uh, wind resistance of the triangle head. And Douglas B will be moving on to the finals. Congratulations to Douglas. Very cool. We are uh, go. Oops, we're going to go ahead and add Douglas here to the grid in the finals. There we go. Very good. Let's get back to the game. Tomorrow, we'll have uh, the opponent for Douglas. And uh, let's see here. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Tigers are up 3-2. to two. It is tight. Um, we haven't switched over to the in-game stats yet. There we go. Player of the game, if we had to give it out right now. I mean, Reggie put us ahead. Otherwise, I might consider um, Gibby. Dawson will lead off against Patterson. Patterson, not even at 90 pitches yet. So the Tigers haven't really been working him much as Dawson grounds out. He's one for three on the day. Kevin Bass up next. One for one with that sack RBI. Flying out to right center field. And we're back to Sweet Lou. Lou 0 for 2 from the leadoff roll today. And he lines out to short. Mullins snags it. We go to the top of the eighth. Here is Dave Rucker. We're going to keep him in there against Fiala. We've got three lefties coming up. And then if we are still in the lead, we'll bring in Weaver to close it out. All right. Neil Fiala. Ground ball. That looked like it was going to make it through the uh, infield, but Whitaker cuts it off and throws him out. One down. Here's Odeby McDowell. Ground ball to Whitaker. Easy play for Lou. And finally, Mike Squires. Two for three on the day. Ground ball to first. Brock scoops it. Oh, he didn't scoop it. What did he do? He threw it away? Was it Rucker trying to score? Uh, trying to uh, cover first, I mean? And Brock... Blew it. Okay, well, now we're going to be forced to bring in... Well, okay. Gosh, this is like seems like a mistake. Um, yeah, Buddy Bell does not hit lefties well, and Rucker gets righties out uh, excellently. 157. So, the, it, you know, I mean, who knows? But this seems like my advantage. That's my logic. Plus, Bell is 0 for 4. And he pops it up. Good job, Rucker. Let's see if Trammell can uh, close the glove. There we go. Okay, we're going to the bottom of the eighth. Mickey Hatcher leading off. Ground ball to short. Hatcher finishes the day one for four. 
Next up is Brock. He's got to make up for his error. Flying out to left field. Two down. Trammel walks. Okay, we got Trammel. On first for Reggie. He's already got a home run today. So far, player of the game, material, and he hits a ground ball to second. Okay, so we are going to the ninth inning. Solid job by Rucker. We're going to bring in Roger Weaver to close this one out. And we are going to replace Hatcher with Guy Soulars. And Bass with Eddie Miller. Okay. So we've really improved our defense with that. Um, and Weaver's got it tough here. He's got a... Uh, Kittle, who's got 12 home runs. Poker Robo has got 11. And then uh, Fred Mullen. So here we go. Ron Kittle. Ground ball to second. Lou tosses him out. One down. Next up, Biff. Switch hitting catcher. Like Mickey Tettleton, one of my favorite catchers on the Tigers. Poker Robo pops it up to Whitaker. And this is the ball game right here. Fran Mullins, 166 hitter versus right-handers. Weaver gets him to fly to left center field. Play is made, and that is the ball game. That was a good game. Tigers win 3-2. to two. Handshakes, butt slaps, and sloppy stakes. And uh, Tigers win 3-2. to two. No trade offers. Let's take a look at the standings. Player of the game is going to be Red J. Um, yeah, we have a four-and-a-half game lead now over Baltimore. And the Yankees must have been off as they fall a half game further back. Uh, Kansas City. Let's take a look at the National League just for the hell of it. Wow, St. Louis and New York all knotted up. And uh, Cincinnati cruising in the West with a 10 and a half game lead. Let's take a look at the transactions. Nothing, nothing new at all. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Congratulations to Douglas on uh, winning uh, the robot race back tomorrow with another robot race. And uh, let's see here. There we go. Wow. White Sox had left 13 runners on base. The Tigers walked eight batters, and yet the White Sox only scored uh, two runs. We, we had an error. Um, we gave up seven hits. So uh, Cappy gets the win. Good job by Cappy. He goes to four and one. Roger Weaver has 10 saves now. Reggie hit his 10th home run. Kevin Bass hit his uh, fourth double. Reggie Patterson, hard luck loser, goes to two and three. That's going to be it for today. Come back tomorrow for game two of the four-game series. Until then, everyone have a great night.